The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples As the Father has loved me so I have loved you remain in my love if you keep my commandments you will remain in my love just as I have kept my father's commandments and remain in his love I have told you this so that my own joy may be in you and your joy be complete this is my commandment love one another as I have loved you A man can have no greater love than to lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I shall not call you servants any more because a servant does not know his master's business. I call you friends because I have made known to you everything I have learned from my father. I did not choose you. You did not choose me. No, I chose you and I commissioned you to go out and to bear fruit. fruit that will last and then the father will give you anything you ask him in my name what i command you is to love one another the gospel of the lord praise to you lord jesus christ I have told you this so that my own joy may be in you and your joy be complete. Jesus speaking about the joy that he has. And he tells us I have given you this joy and you may also share in this joy of me and this joy may be complete in you. <clears throat> Where did Jesus derive his joy from? Where did Jesus derive his joy? Where from where he got his joy? From where? Hello? From the Father. He got it from the Father. Because the Father and he are so woven as one that Jesus has everything that the Father has. and among other things one of the most beautiful characteristics of jesus is joy <coughs> and he says remain in my love if you keep my commandment and you will remain in that love this love that jesus is speaking about is not an option it is not an option it is a commandment i command you and so dear sisters and brothers if you are seated here you have no other choice but to love and that is not my commandment that is a commandment of jesus <coughs> now where you get your joy if i may ask you where do you get your joy from father i get it from jesus sure where do you get your joys where do you locate your joy my joy is my wife my joy is my husband my joy is my friends my joy is my sister my brother my joy is my girlfriend my boyfriend <coughs> my joy is my parents there are so many joys that we get it is not joy it is not joy there is a difference between joy and happiness happiness is a reaction to something great in my life happiness is a reaction to something great that i have got in my life for instance i just got married new wife happy la new husband happy joy this is happiness not joy and i got a new car i am happy i got a big house new house i am happy i got a new job promotion i am happy and this is something great that we have happiness 
Now happiness is not the same as joy. Joy is the product of someone great in our life, of someone great. Joy is of someone great. Who is that someone great which you just mentioned? Jesus in our life, someone great. Apart, of, apart from Jesus, there could be someone amongst us who can be great also. That person is great because that person is so interwoven with God. <laughs> Many years ago when I was uh, studying in a seminary, Pope John Paul II visited Singapore. And we all had the privilege of driving up to Singapore to visit, to go for this occasion. And I was seated somewhere here where the altar was, the Pope's altar to celebrate the Mass, <laughs> just about 50 meters or 60 meters away. And afterwards, when the motorcade was driving into the stadium, there was a big loud and people were screaming and people were clapping for his coming into the stadium, National, National Stadium of Singapore. And as he was passing, the motorcade was passing the place where I am, as I was looking at him, maybe almost close to 60, 70 meters away, he was waving at all. And as I was looking at him, my hair stood, my hair literally stood as I was feeling some awe about this man who has become a saint today. This is something, someone, someone great in our lives. There may be someone around us who may be great like the saints. Joy, happiness is material. Happiness is earthly. Happiness is very momentary, just like even sex is momentary. But when you sex is translated to love, love is long lasting. And love is joy. And love is moral. Joy is moral. Joy is heavenly. Joy is the product of a spiritual lifestyle. If you say if you are having joy and you don't live a spiritual lifestyle, that is not joy. That is happiness. Wow, I got something so nice and I'm happy. That is for a moment. Joy is something that is rooted in God and that is long lasting. Whereas happiness is temporary. Like I said just now, your car, your marriage on the day of your marriage is happiness. The rest of the year, the rest of your life, it should not be happiness, it should be joy, living your married life. And so, John 15 verses 9 to 17, today's gospel tells us, remain in God's love. There is joy in Jesus' life. Why there was joy in Jesus' life? Jesus was loving, Jesus was giving, Jesus was caring, Jesus was loving. So dear sisters and brothers, have you been sharing, have you been giving, have you been loving, have you been doing all this? Sharing. And this sharing, this giving, this loving, it has to be, or caring has to be one that is without any expectation. You know, today very few people come to serve in the church. When you serve, you serve without expectations. But you go to serve at the workplace because you got a pay packet coming to you at the end of the day. And so you give. But this giving, this serving, this caring, this loving is so unconditional because it is rooted in the love of Jesus. And that is so negligible these days in the lives of people. So where is your source of joy? Where is your source of joy? If my source of joy is Jesus, it is different. If you say my wife is my joy, tomorrow if your wife changes into a bulldog, bulldog means not literally, lah. or your husband a bulldog, let's say angry, that moment what happens to the joy? If someone around you changes, someone said, Father, don't say bulldog, bulldog very cute. Maybe some other dog, Rottweiler or Doberman or something like that. 
you know so the joy is ripped off so the source of your joy you are feeling so broken you are feeling so dampened you feeling lost because i looked up to that person for joy and she didn't he or she did not give to me and so dear sisters and brothers this joy that we are speaking about has to be rooted in jesus love in jesus love if this love disappears from you this love disappears from you you become a monster you become a monster you know but we are not monsters we are children of god god made us his children but sometimes we do become monsters the moment i get angry and lash out at somebody with all the words in the world that should not be heard of i become a monster the moment i become so jealous i become a monster the moment i become so full of hatred towards someone i become a monster the moment i start passing calumny about someone i dislike i am a monster so that very moment you become that but the lord is not calling us to be like that he says i am with you i love you and you remain in my love and he teaches us this is what true joy is all about and this joy will bring us to a different level there was this lady 90 years old her husband passed away and she was 90 years old and she was all alone no children so she decided to move into a home as she decides to move into a home she got herself ready and went into this home and there was this young woman in attendance and she got herself registered and that girl said uh, aunty wait for a while while we get our thing done for you prepared all the documentation and the rooms prepared so she had to wait for more than an hour patiently she waited and afterwards this girl came and told her aunty your room is not so big not so small reasonable size with attached bathroom and uh, it is in the fourth floor oh that's so wonderful so nice thank you then the girl went on to take her to the fourth floor and as she was walking with her she said aunty there is a little bed there a table and uh, somewhat arranged all well there oh that is fabulous that is so wonderful amazing so nice then the girl was puzzled the girl said aunty how come i have, you have not even seen the room how come you are saying it is wonderful it is amazing it is beautiful then the girl said young woman i have arranged everything in my mind i have arranged everything well in my heart dear sisters and brothers when you have arranged yourself in your mind in your heart even before you can arrive at that moment you're already experiencing that joy why because you have made a choice <coughs> problems happen automatically everyone anyone here has problems that you plan okay i want to enter into this problem no problems happen automatically right problems happen automatically this problem plan and tell you i'm pro problem coming to you problems happen automatically joy is a choice that you make anger auto you get angry with someone automatically you get angry but peace is a choice hatred you hate someone just like that just like someone you just happen to hate because someone said something but love is a choice negativity is something very normal automatic but positivity is a choice i make complaining we don't plan to complain we complain all the time we are so comfortable complaining and complaining everything and anything we complain but gratitude is a choice so dear sisters and brothers when you make the right choices in your life these choices will bear fruit he says 
No, I chose you and I commissioned you to go out to bear fruit. So dear sisters and brothers, when you make the right choices in your life, you bear fruit. When you are prompted automatically to do things by your feelings, with your head, you will not be able to love the way Jesus has called you to love. And so the choices you make are the ones that determine your joy. What choices have you made all your life? <clears throat> are you a person filled with so much of joy or momentary happiness? I got this moment, I'm happy. <clears throat> Next moment, I'm not happy because that person is not there, that thing is not there, and I lose my happiness. <clears throat> when there is joy, there is joy within you, you're always a happy person. You're able to transmit this joy to others, to someone around you. Can I ask you one favor, dear sisters and brothers, those of you who are wearing masks also can remove a minute, not a minute, a few seconds. All of you, next to you, there's a neighbor who is a friend, who is a husband or wife or children, whoever it may be, just look at the person and just give a smile. Can you do that, please? Look at the person and give a smile. 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 You know, someone saying now, I can hear someone saying to the husband, finally you're smiling today. La. Or someone telling the wife, thank God, today you're smiling. What is so difficult for us to smile, you know? You now Some people have thick mustache, you know? Very difficult to see the smile, so trim a bit so that when you can smile a bit better, you know. And someone, I saw someone with a long beard. And I said, so closely there was uh, strands of Maggie Me <laughs> in the beard. He wiped up here, but he forgot to wipe down there. <laughs> so it has to be told, you know. Why are we so difficult for us to smile and to be happy, to be joyful? <clears throat> you know, when people are in the... When we, when we die, we become cops. They won't only totally tell you, Father Xavier, they say that body of Father Xavier or uh, that cops put in the coffin. La. Once in the coffin, I hear people say, Oh, you, all the makeup, you know, makeup, lipstick, everything, try to make the person look smiley face. And then we, I have heard, heard people commenting, Hey, look, la, she's so beautiful in the coffin, you know. He's so handsome, all the makeup. Hey, my friend, he is already a cops. She's already a cop's dead body. Why make up and put the person there to make the person smile? While you are still alive, smile. While you are alive, radiant, be radiant, give that joy. Don't until you become a, at the funeral in the coffin, very handsome. Who cares whether the person is smiling or not? Of course, we want our, our, our beloved to look, happy, to look pleasant. That is fine. But all your life, you live a miserable life, whining and complaining and grumbling and bitterness and unhappiness. But on your deathbed, people make you happy. Nobody knows. So dear sisters and brothers, the Lord is calling us to this beautiful experience of joy in Him. And so let us make an effort to come closer, to come into Him. Nobody else can give you this joy. Everyone else will give you happiness. But joy can only be obtained from God. There is a difference between happiness, being happy and being joyful. And so that is why Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, you remain in my love. And my joy will be complete in you, dear sisters and brothers. Let us pray for this grace to be able to recognize God working in our lives and let us radiate this joy amongst us. Let us become more and more like what Jesus wants of each one of us to be. We will have problems. We will have difficulties. We will have challenges. But don't let dampen you. When you are in the Lord, you will continue to be in joy. Amen.